I don't know how to roll my R's very well, so I'm not even gonna try, but today we're making birria tacos. Have you ever heard of it? Birria, birria. Well, birria tacos are essentially a beef stew, which is cooked in a lot of peppers and spices, and it creates this wonderful sauce. And when we go to make our tacos, this is super important, you wanna dip those tortillas into the sauce, get it coated with the sauce and some oil. And then we're gonna fry them in a pan, and we're gonna add our meat, we're gonna add some cheese, and we're gonna cook it and fold it over until that cheese melts and the taco shell gets nice and crispy. It is incredible. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after our chef joke. Here's chef joke number one, number two's coming a little bit later. All right, so why is the tortilla such a bad conversationalist? Because they always talk over you. All right, let's get into our recipe. First up, we are gonna be cooking this in our Instant Pot, which is a pressure cooker. You don't have to, you can cook it on the stove in a stock pot or even a slow cooker, but it's gonna take a lot more time. If you're gonna do it in a stock pot, it'll probably take you three hours to cook. I'm gonna do it in the Instant Pot, it'll take me about an hour. Okay, so I'm using short ribs here and I cut these into just manageable size pieces. Leave the fat on because we want that on there when we dip our tortillas into the sauce. We want that sauce to have a nice layer of oil that's floating on top. I'm going to salt and pepper these on both sides uh, before we put them into our cast iron pan to sear them. I have my cast iron pan here with a little bit of oil over medium high heat. You really want this pan hot before you put the meat in. Give that oil a little swirl and then add the meat. And we're going to sear the meat about two to three minutes per side. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, this kind of sear. We want that brown goodness on there. That's gonna make this taste amazing. Yeah. If your meat is cut into cubes like this, go ahead and sear the other sides as well. All right, I'm just gonna place the brown pieces on my plate over here and we'll cook up the rest. If you need to, add a little bit more oil. Once all the beef is seared, go ahead and place some more avocado oil in the pan and a half of an onion chopped. Saute this for about three to four minutes and scrape the bottom of the pan to pick up all the bits. Look at those onions, they're picking up all that flavor from the pan. Now we still wanna deglaze our pan because there's still bits stuck to the bottom, so I'm gonna pour in some of our beef broth. If you don't have beef and you just have chicken, it'll work, so don't worry about it. So take your wooden spoon and then make sure you just kind of scrape the bottom of the pan so that you get all that goodness up. Now we're gonna place this and the beef into our Instant Pot. And you wanna pour that extra sauce that's left over on the plate into the pot. So now we're gonna move into our sauce. So what I'm using here are three different dried chilies. We have our guajillo chili, which I'm gonna use six of those, and then the the pasilla ancho chili pod, and then the last one is the chili de arbo, which is really more spicy. Now, what you wanna do with these dried chilies is we have to cut off the end, and you're gonna get rid of, kinda of open it up like that, and get rid of all of the seeds. We don't want the seeds, I don't want the seeds. It's, that's where the heat is, and I don't want so much of the heat as I want the flavor. So you may have to take your knife and slice the pepper open so that you can get the seeds out well enough. All right, just rip it open and just scrape them out. Feel free to leave those seeds in if you like it hot. So I put the chilies into a stock pot and now I'm adding about three cups of beef broth. We're gonna place this on the stove and I'm gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna boil it for 15 minutes. Okay, so while the chili pods are over there on the stove softening up, we're gonna do our garlic. I've been peeling garlic. You know what happens when you peel a lot of garlic? Your fingers get sticky and then you can't peel garlic. It's crazy. Anyway, I like to use lots of garlic here. Take your garlic and place it in the garlic press and then press it out in, over the meat in the Instant Pot. All right, our chilies have cooled enough so that now we can place most of our sauce ingredients into a blender to blend it up. So you can really feel that these, these um, peppers are nice and soft. So we're gonna just scoop them in here. 
minus any extra seeds I see. And we used that beef broth in here instead of water just for more flavor because we're gonna use this in our sauce as well. Now to the blender, we're gonna add some of this broth in there. And I've got a can of crushed tomatoes here. These are by Mira Glenn, they're organic. And I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna toss that in there to mix it up. We're gonna add some apple cider vinegar. You can get all the ingredients, guys, in the description of the video. Click down there where it says show more. Next up is our chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. I took the seeds out of that because I didn't want them, you know, I don't, this is gonna be just too hot for me if, it, if I left it in. So that's for a nice smoky flavor. Now, I've got some ground coriander that I'm gonna toss in there just so everything gets mixed up well. Smoked paprika. Oregano, now if you can find the Mexican oregano, that would be good, but if you don't have it, that's okay too. Toss that in. Ground cumin. And a couple of whole cloves. So now we'll blend this up until it's nice and smooth. All right, so I'm gonna take a little taste of this just to see where we're at on flavors and you know what it needs? It needs a little salt. So I'm gonna put probably a half a teaspoon in here. And we'll blend it again and then I'm gonna pour it in. And then we'll just pour this right over the meat in the Instant Pot. Okay, and the last thing we wanna add is the equivalent of a couple of bay leaves and one cinnamon stick. Now all we have to do is put our lid on the Instant Pot. We're gonna cook this on pressure cooker, of course, and we're gonna set it for 50 minutes, and we're gonna do a natural release for about 10 minutes, and then we'll take it out and we'll see where we're at. Our beef is cooking, so it must be time for chef joke number two. Here we go. Why can't you make everybody happy? Because you're not a taco. Okay, the Instant Pot is done. It cooked for 50 minutes on high pressure and then we let it sit for 10. And now we're gonna, we're gonna see what it's all about. All right, so you wanna grab your, grab a piece of beef here, that's what I'm gonna do, and give it a squeeze. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's just falling apart and that's what we want. So now all we have to do is shred this up and we'll be ready to make tacos. Once you shred all the beef, just put it right back in the Instant Pot. So here's how we make the tacos. We take a corn tortilla, dip it into the sauce, and then place that onto a hot griddle. Place a little bit of jack cheese on top, just cover the whole tortilla. Grab some of that tender beef and place it on one half of the tortilla. After a minute or two, you're gonna scrape up the tortilla, release it if it's stuck from the cheese and the sauce, and fold it in half. So now I flipped them over after a minute or so and cooked it on the second side the same amount of time. Now when you serve this up, go ahead and place it on a plate. We'll add a little bit of sauce to it and a little bit of cilantro if you like. Some people like to add a little onion on the inside as well, but that's not my preference, so I didn't do it. These turned out really delicious. I really enjoyed them. The flavor is amazing. That sauce is just, you know, it has those peppers in there, which just are so flavorful with just a hint of heat and all those spices really just liven it up. You know what would go great with these Barilla tacos? Spanish rice, and I've got the recipe for you. You've got to try it. It is so flavorful. I mean, it's just, it really is. So I'll leave a link for you right over here. Try my Spanish rice, and I think you'll just love it. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to, leave me a comment. I'd always love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time for another rockin' recipe.